How are you everybody? Thanks for stopping by today. I appreciate it. And on the side, real quick, if you enjoy art, give me a follow on Insta, taking a new direction with my artwork at the moment. And once I get a new cable for my tablet, I'll be back in action. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's now talk about Toyotaro once again and the latest chapter. Now, I know that I am a bit late giving my thoughts on it. I actually stopped reading the manga at chapter 43, which I realized was December 2018. Didn't realize it had actually been that long. And it's partly due to because I decided to do another rewatch of Dragon Ball and through DBZ and also get back to reading the Dragon Ball manga as well as other series. So I put it off to the side. But the other day, I spent most of it just reading the Dragon Ball Super manga and catching up. Probably not the most productive day, with the intention of doing a review on the arc so far, but once I realized how much content I had missed, and after just writing one of my longest videos previous, I was not motivated to do a large review. And to be honest, a lot of these chapters deserve their own videos, and it's probably good to hold off on a review until the arc is actually over. But with that, my thoughts on it so far is that I can't wait to see this arc in the anime for one. I've been very entertained and found this to be quite an enjoyable read. And like one thing I love about this arc is all the space exploration and seeing the Yardrats for example and the Zoon Sea Gym which was a surprise. So a lot of throwbacks, really getting some early DBZ vibes back when there was a lot of exploration in space etc. And a lot of different planets and races were always showing up. And there were also some really great chapters I would like to make a dedicated video on. Even though they have been out a while like chapter 55 when Vegeta is fighting on Yardrat. So even though I'm sure it has been talked about and it was a while ago, if you'd still like a video of me discussing some of these previous chapters, let me know in the comments. And let's take a flying leap into the current chapter. And obviously, spoilers ahead. So looking over the artwork aspect first, I gotta say, and this goes for this arc overall, I think some of the previous problems, especially early on, was as you've probably heard a lot, is over cluttering. There was quite often more panels than there needed to be and the balance of white space wasn't that great and the artwork itself was all right but yeah especially compared to the standard Tori armor set in his work in regards to panel layout it was lacking and going back and comparing some of these new panels to the battle with Beerus you can notice how much more compact and how easy it is to just pick everything up there are also less unnecessary panels and one thing that also helps is the speed lines being closer together now you see by having the speed lines that are spaced pretty far apart, the character can kind of blend into the background and overall the panel can feel noisy, whereas by increasing the intensity and thickness, the background is saturated with more black and it distinguishes the characters from the background just that bit more and creates good contrast. And additionally, when placed right, it also adds to the intensity of a punch or movement trying to be conveyed. However, looking back at the Tournament of Power when he taps into Ultra Instinct and comparing the beginning pages, you can notice that the panels are just a bit cleaner, although at times it may appear hardly any different. But from an overall consistency standpoint, reading the chapter with Jiren, I just showed number 41, and then switching back to this chapter throughout this one, I did get the sense that he's going for less panels, and overall, it does read better as a result. Of course, he still could lessen it up here and there, but generally, I think it has improved. And I feel like the general quality of the art in regards to anatomy and perspective was good again. There wasn't anything that caught my eye except maybe one or two panels, but it was small generally. Equally, there was a strong sense of speed conveyed as well as the punches holding some weight to them through good use of facial expressions and their body language. But to the battle itself, considering that was the main focus of this chapter, it's just great getting to see Ultra Instinct back for one. But I like how he starts it off by hitting Moro with just the air from his fist. Moro responds with using his magic, I believe, to leverage the elements of Earth against Goku and sends out several blasts and Goku just dodges them with ease and a great illustration of speed done by Toyotaro and then spins around and lands a kick and exchanges punches with Moro again. But it's interesting, even after getting kicked by Goku, he acts pretty much unfazed. Then Moro does this technique to suspend and bind him, which I thought was a pretty cool move. I've really liked Moro's abilities in general throughout this arc. And soon after, there are several panels of dialogue, which I like because when it comes to dialogue panels, although I haven't read a lot of the previous arcs for quite a while, in the back of my mind, I remember Toyotaro could drag the, the dialogue scenes out quite a bit, so I appreciate that he did keep it short here. And the following panels leading up to Goku's Kamehameha were just really smooth in regard to the panel layout. But like I said before, they don't feel over cluttered. But anyway, Goku sees through his illusion and there is a bit of a beam struggle. Then we had this scene here, which was a bit of a throwback to that fight with Vegeta. 
And man, not to get off topic, but I ended up rereading some of that fight just to find that image for the panel comparison. Because at first I was like, I swear I remember seeing this shot somewhere before. And anyway, I just wanted to say that the motion to that fight is just top tier stuff. And out of all the arcs, still my favorite fight in DBZ and maybe even in Dragon Ball in general. Kaioken is where it is at. But anyway, back to Super, Goku continues to hit some more decent blows on Moro. And again, he just seems to blow them off. Goku continues to do those air punch things for an entire page. And then both of these guys get great shots in. As I said before, a lot of great impact for trade. Although I don't know if he needed to have that many panels for the same action. But that's just a small nitpick and doesn't really reduce the impact. Moro then tries his energy absorption technique. Goku brushes past it in some blows with Goku getting a decent kick in. And I really love the movement conveyed in the panel layout. And also Goku flicking back and just launching into a kick. Again, really feeling the impact and weight to these blows. And man, I really love this panel here as well. And the way he draws the arms actually have a bit more of that blocky look from Toriyama back in the day. So it is interesting seeing how his style is changed. But anyway, furthermore down, we get a bit of an interesting discussion whether Goku has mastered Ultra Instinct or not. And I've got to say, I found Mirus to be quite more interesting than... I first originally thought when we saw him at the beginning. But anyway, a lot more blows are exchanged. And I guess this page is an example that he still could lessen it up on the panels. And at the same time, still get even maybe more impact. And I just threw this image together literally in a minute. So the quality itself isn't good. But my main point is that I think if he cut out the dialogue boxes on the bottom. And maybe even the reaction one on the top. And just finish the page with the close up shot of Piccolo shocked. To create a bit of suspense. Then the next page just have a full page shot of him powering up I think that would look really cool and flow quite well but that's just me but anyway after powering up he manages to grapple Goku which I thought was quite an interesting feat within itself there's also some more dialogue about Goku achieving the sign level and that it consumes a lot of stamina which was interesting again additionally Goku seems to be quite confident he can still win this and to finish it off some of these ending shots feel quite Toriyama-esque and with that note the chapter ends so overall it was quite an enjoyable read and i definitely think you'll enjoy it too so take a look at this chapter on viz media or some other online reader i also got to say that i enjoyed the pacing of this battle the artwork was good overall and i am really looking forward to the next chapter so with that hope you enjoyed this video might release and work on the part two for the review of toriyama's modern work next unless some other really interesting video topic comes up and i get completely sidetracked but until then I will see you later.